Hello guys, welcome to the uh, first recap of the game in Tata Steel. I have decided to start recording recaps um, because I feel like a lot of my life and uh, a lot of the chess world, uh, I feel like it isn't properly um, presented to the public, uh, especially the sort of, a lot of people don't really understand how the chess world works. So I have decided uh, against my chess purist opinions to start recording recaps after every single game. And uh, I will also be sharing sort of a, a daily um, insight into my routine uh, during the tournaments. And when I'm not playing tournaments, um, I'm going to be uploading sort of videos uh, showing my daily routine, training, exercise, wherever, whatever I'm doing throughout the day. Um, because I really want to sort of share my journey and um, shine light on sort of things happening in my life and the challenges I'm facing. Uh, um, in the chess world, you know, getting tournament invitations and what sort of barriers I'm trying to to, to overcome. And uh, I think it'd just be great if I could, you know, make it all public and, um, uh, you know, let uh, you, know, you guys have a you know, unique insight into my life. Um, I'll also be publishing newsletters uh, on Substack. Um, this will, will also be discussing chess, but also life, you know, discussing some things that might happen to me in my travels. I have had a lot of very interesting experiences. So uh, I hope that you guys uh, enjoy the series uh, covering the games from the Talk to Steel tournament, some inside information. So now we're gonna start the analysis of my, of my first game. Uh, I was white against Liam Vrolik. This is the first round in the challengers group. I'm the top seed. The game four, d5, knight of three, next to six, bishop c4. This is the Italian opening. Uh, he goes for knight of six. Here I could go for the, you know, uh, the fried liver which is probably one of the first openings I learned going for this pawn, but at the highest level, uh, it's still played, but uh, you certainly don't expect, uh, you know, to, to trap your opponent like this. Sometimes, you know, a beginner might go like this, and uh, you're just checkmating them, you know? The king is trapped. It looks like a bit of a puzzle rush, you know? Not in DC. So you don't, you know, plus knight a5, and a lot of theory here, but won't bore you guys with that. Um, so I go d3, just protecting my pawn. Bishop c5, castles. He plays d6. I play c3, um, potentially preparing the break d4. This is one of the crucial ideas in the Italian. This is sort of slowly maneuver your pieces and then prepare the d4 break to sort of gain more space. So castles, rook e1, protecting the e4 pawn, preparing d4, a5, one of the main moves, I play h3. It's a nice sort of prophylactic move. Knight can't come to g4, now bishop can't come to g4, just a waiting move. He goes bishop e6, attacking my bishop. Um, I move the bishop to the side. I don't want to trade this bishop because then if I trade, it sort of opens up the file for the rook and there's pressure on the f-file. So I I want to keep the position closed and I really am trying to play for the d4 break. He goes bishop a7, play knight d2, developing my knight. We've had a game here as well. One game I played bishop b3, trading these bishops, which I won against the uh, Shams one like d4 here, knight g6, bishop f1. I won a very nice game, um, but I was assumed he'd be quite well prepared there. So I went knight d2. 97 d4, out of one, bishop a4. Um, the point of bishop a4 is that I want to bring the bishop back to c2. Um, and then, again, a lot of this position is centered around some uh, the, the pawn structure. So, obviously, right now, I have some central control. Black's long-term plan is to play d5 to challenge the center and uh, trade pieces and sort of equalize things. So I have some slight pressure. Go bishop a4, knight h5, knight f1, knight g3. This is all my preparation. You can see that I... Um, spend a little bit of time here, like just choosing which line to play. Um, and then I all very quickly, my preparation here, I take with a pawn. And this is a new move, my novelty, takes queen d2. So I gave up the bishop pair, but essentially I'm gaining time. So I'm attacking this knight with tempo. And now another time, another move I get with tempo, I'm activating my rook. And then I bring the bishop here, attacking the bishop. Um, my preparation thought that you could take take and then go here to double these pawns, they're a bit weaker. But my opponent wanted to go here uh, to get the, the queen into d5 with tempo. But now I go rook a1. And the whole point of my initial plan is working out quite well because I gave up the bishop pair when I took an f4 to gain time. And then I got my rook activated. And now I actually have like my two knights and my rooks on the open file stopping the rooks from challenging it. And all my pieces are sort of ready to attack, you know, when I, on, the queen's, on the king side. The, the, the rooks aren't developed, the bishop is sort of hitting the pawn, but it's sort of closed, and the knight's a good defender, so all my pieces are ready to start the... He goes rook d8, pressuring the d4 pawn, I go h4, 
I still knew this was an idea. It was not directly, I did not remember it exactly, but I knew this was the, the idea. At five, I go right back to E2. Um, and then here my opponent makes a very big mistake, F4. Um, they were supposed to play bishop takes d4. Uh, the point being that now if I play h5, they have this intermediate move f4. Um, and the point is that if I play knight e4 now, now they can go knight e5. And still the position goes on, I'm still doing fine. But now when they play f4, knight e4, uh, bishop takes d4, um, I can actually, I have a really, really like subtle move that I actually saw in advance. And it's queen c2. And he plays h6 defending, but the point is after queen c2, I'm threatening to go knight fg5 and then h5. Um, and then I have the threats on the h7. So I'm down a pawn, but my rooks are great on the e-fell. My two knights are coming in. The king is weak. And again, there could be some pins on the d-file, which you'll see come into action later. So he goes h6. I just take the pawn. He attacks my queen. I just go back, again, preparing some sort of idea. And now, um, it's very important in chess to understand how the momentum is shifting. And to be honest, like... When I when I played the move h4, and he thought for all this time, like I just looked at my opponent's face and he just was so defeated because he's probably very frustrated um, that I had prepared so much and I knew so much, and it looks very scary without preparation, without knowing like the evaluation. He might already think that he's made a big mistake. He doesn't know that the position is still objectively equal. So I could feel the momentum shifting, and you look at his time advance time edge. He spends like six, 14 minutes here, and then here he's already. It's clear that he's extremely nervous. He plays h6. Um, and I just take the pawn. I'm playing simple chess to go back. And now, okay, I understood that I have an hour and 12 minutes. Um, he has 11 minutes. And it's just, you know, inevitable that he'll blunder if I just keep the pressure. He plays queen c6. And, uh, okay, I understood immediately that if I just take take and rook d2, I have a pin. And uh, maybe he was hoping that if I go here, you have this trick c5. And if you take back the pawn, you can actually take this. And the rook is undefended. But if I go here and here, you take. Okay, first of all, I can take. My, my knight defends the rook, and I can just take and sidestep. And then if you try to double, I double. And okay, the only way to defend, you can't move the bishop, the rook is undefended. You take, I just go here. So I win. So this was a very nice game, a very good way to start the tournament. Uh, my preparation ended about, uh, of course, bishop d5. This move I didn't check. But the position kind of transposes because I had this position in my preparation. So it's quite similar. Um, but again, I put some pressure. My opponent uh, played this line for the first time. Uh, he didn't have much experience, but I, this was the first time he played this line. So, you know, uh, I, got, I, I took advantage of my opponent's lack of experience, uh, put a lot of pressure in the opening and uh, put some pressure on the clock and he collapsed. So this was a very nice start uh, to win the tournament. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the analysis. Um, I will be posting uh, some more detailed, maybe not more details on Substack, um, which is like, it's like a business newsletter uh, platform. And I, I'll use that to, to sort of talk about um, some interesting experiences that I've had while traveling, how chess reflects life and business and, and, and maybe politics. Um, uh, so I think that'll be a good way for me to, to speak in a more formal setting. But of course, um, I would I want to do these recaps because so many people do recaps of my games. And they get all these views, and uh, I think uh, you guys should get the recaps, you know, straight from the actual source. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for upcoming videos uh, analyzing all of my games. Check out my Substack, and uh, keep working hard, guys, and uh, keep improving as chess players. Uh, goodbye.